Great. So we'll get Thank started. You. It's after. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Um, it's after 530. So we'll go ahead and open the meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, notice of today's meeting was published on November 3rd and November 10th. I am David Bloomberg and uh, with me uh, on the board today are Maureen Scanlon and Sarah Northrup and uh, along with Carolyn Mish from the city of Northampton. Um, we have two items on the agenda, um, uh, but before we get to those two items, we will <clears throat> ask if there's anyone from the public joining us who would like to comment uh, on matters other than the two agenda items. And Carolyn, I'll ask you to confirm that we're not seeing anybody. Uh, I don't see any hands raised for okay. anything that's not on the public hearing. Okay, and then for the two items on the agenda, uh, I'll ask that um, we'll, we'll start with a presentation by the applicant or the representative of the applicant. Um, just a brief presentation because we have materials that we've been looking at. And um, then the board will have a chance to ask questions. Then members of the public, if any, will have a chance to comment or ask questions. And I would ask that every, everyone who speaks first identify yourself uh, with a name and address for the record that Carolyn is keeping. Um, so we'll go ahead now and hear from the applicant or the representative of the applicant for the special permit for Dollar Tree to install a rear wall sign higher than allowed and a side wall sign larger than allowed at 172 North King Street map ID 18-15. And who's here for that? I'm Paul T. Chrysanthes from Artifact Science. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, go right uh, ahead. Paul T. Chrysanthes from Artifact Science in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Um, I see that we've also got representatives from Anchor Sign and from uh, Dollar Tree's National Council on the, uh, uh, in the audience as well. Okay. Um, so the regulations say that uh, in, in this zone, one main uh, wall sign is, is allowed. Um, and typically that means street frontage. In this particular case, um, as you, this is in a, a, a big plaza. There's a car dealership, a huge Walmart, and then there's this store up front where the Dollar Tree is going. Um, the way the building is situated, the main wall, um, what I'm calling the main wall, the entrance, is actually perpendicular to the street. Um, so really what we're asking for is for the main frontage sign to be considered as, as where the entrance goes. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm referring to sign A. Okay, so of this, I'm sorry, I'll let him uh, let you finish your presentation before I start asking questions. Well, I, I mean, I think that that if, if we're trying to be brief in a nutshell, um, that covers it. The, uh, the size of the sign would be allowed. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and, uh, if the building was situated differently, we wouldn't be having this call. So really what we're asking for is for sign A, that side wall to be recognized as the main wall since the front entrance. Um, and I know that previous tenants there, the mattress firm um, <laughs> and another Sleepy's mattress store before that, um, put their, their larger sign on that, uh, on that entrance. So we're, we're, we're asking for the same consideration that the last two tenants have had. So, so go ahead, uh, Sarah, go ahead. Did you have questions? Um, yeah, just like to sort of, uh, could you please, uh, Lauren, go through sign A, B, C, D. I see they are a tabulator you're showing or you're sharing your screen. Um, which sign is which? Just uh, summarize and then. Um, okay. Uh, so so uh, so that we are specific about 
what the permit is requesting. Sign D, which is a, a non-issue for tonight's call, is a uh, it's a pylon sign right by the street. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a sign there for what hopefully will be Dollar Tree. Um, later down the road in the same plaza, there's a Walmart sign, and further down the road, again on the other end of the plaza, is a uh, car dealership. So every, everyone gets a street sign. Um, the way the regular sign B is the uh, what I would call the side of the building, since it's the mm -hmm. side of the entrance. Um, side sign B is is facing the road. So I think based on your regulations, you're calling that the um, the main frontage. When in fact, sign A is over the front door. That would be the entrance of the store. So I'm calling sign A um, the the frontage or the main sign, even though it faces not even a parking lot, it faces a driveway. And sign C, um, I would call that to the right of the entrance. Uh, I think you would call that the rear sign since it's uh, parallel to the street, but behind the building. Okay, so the one that is uh, in the application is called a rear sign. Which one is that? What's called a rear sign would be sign C. I'm sorry. Of course. Excuse me for just a moment. Mm -hmm. So I can also clarify. Um, so sign C and sign A are part of the special permit application. Correct. Yeah, sign correct. A is um, the size that would be allowed as a front wall sign, a, a maximum of 100 square feet or 10% of the facade area. Sign C is part of the special permit application as well because it a rear wall sign um, it has a um, special permit bit. threshold if it's above 10 feet uh, above grade. And so it is higher than 10 feet above grade. So that's why that's here for special permit. So they're just two of the total four signs that um, would trigger a special permit. Correct. Um, so, so can I ask for clarification on that, Carolyn? It looks like what I'm reading is that sign C is the one that's 10 feet above grade. Correct. Yep. Okay. So we're really uh, the two. Uh, so we're really the, the, the it's a technic, the A, B is kind of a technicality because what do you, what you call the front versus the side is, it doesn't quite sync with what, um, what it's zoned as. But I think well, his... it's the orientation of the building yeah, yeah. It is not in the same orientation as the way the sign code reads. So they're yeah. essentially requesting a swap um, and have right. the sidewall sign yeah. side huh. be the front wall and the sidewall size allowance be the um, yeah. uh, okay. on the side. The side and, rather than a rear. And the sign D is simply the street like uh, the street sign that property. everybody has that all the yep. tenants in the plaza have. Okay, that's right. Okay, and what about that ten feet above grade factor? What should we um, be taking into consideration regarding that? So that is um, a typically. Oh, Carolyn. Go ahead, Carolyn. Go ahead, Carolyn. Typically, um, the the reason for that is that. Um, you know, rear wall signs are intended for sort of the back of buildings, I think, yeah. right, in an area where that faces a parking lot. I um, I don't, it's been on the books for many, many years, so I don't really know what the original intention for the 10 foot, but I think, um, you know, if you think about a really tall building and where that sign is, the higher it is, it might be trying to target um, properties beyond the immediate area. And so I think the goal would be to make sure it's low enough so it's really just focused on the, um, pe the people within the context of that property, which is why I assume that we have that regulation. Um, and so in this scenario, you know, it is a quite, quite a large parking lot. Um, so having it slightly higher 
allows projection sort of further away. Um, but again, you have the allowance in the special permit um, section to grant a special permit if there is something about the building the architecture orientation that warrants consideration of a different standard. And so in this case, the building is oriented differently and it also is sort of a standalone in a big sea of parking. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some considerations you could utilize in evaluating the application. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Okay. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> And if the and if the front door of the building had been facing um, the road, basically, sign A and sign B would be allowed, right? Because right. sign B meets the sidewall sign. It just happens to be the front of the building because the front right. door is on that side. Exactly. Right, exactly. And, and then the sign A meets the front wall requirements but it happens to be the side of the building right right, right. so because of its orientation right and, 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 what, yeah. go ahead. no please go ahead and you know what we're uh trying to say is that <clears throat> you know we could put a sign a on <clears throat> what you now call sign b and show the street frontage but the way that the building is made there's a, a clear sign band on the front wall on the on the main entrance wall and on the two side walls, uh, and you know beyond that it's just um, uh, cement blocks, I believe. And then also um, we do have a freestanding sign near the road, and that typically lets traffic know that oh there is a Dollar Tree here, but it doesn't tell them that the Dollar Tree is right there. So they know to go into that driveway to find the Dollar Tree. Right. And what we're saying is that once they do that, the first thing they're gonna do is to look where this Dollar Tree is. But the first thing you do is you look towards the back because you wanna make sure that you, know, you don't hit any other cars in the parking lot. And they see the big Walmart sign. And with respect to the Chevy dealer, they'll see all the Chevys mm. parked in their parking lot. So they know that's the Chevy dealer, but by the time they find Dollar Tree, they've already passed. And if you limit them to a sign B or a size wall uh, size restriction, it's just going to be hard to read, you know? And that, right. that's why they also yeah. have some, some trees, you know, some decorative trees. So you gotta look through the, uh, the leaves to locate it. Yeah. Um, okay. And what about what about lighting for the signs? These are channel channel letters. They'll be internally lit, very much like the exactly like the last two tenants that were there. And was there a plan to um, put timers on the lights, for instance, to turn them off when the business is closed? Hi. So, hi, it's Valerie with Anchor Sign. Hi, Valerie. Hi, um, I'll just speak to the timer thing. Um, and also Scott Kipnis is on um, and he is Dollar Tree's legal counsel. Um, but uh, regarding the timer for the signs, they go off an hour after the store closes. So if the store is open till nine, the signs will go off at 10. They are on an, they run on an EMS system Okay, so there, there would be an objection then if we made that a condition of the uh, permit approval, since uh, you're doing it anyway. Yeah, it, we, we, we leave it, this is Scott Kipman, sorry. Um, we leave it an hour just for safety for our associates. Sure. To yeah, no, I understand, yeah. Exit out and um, the store doesn't have the ability to override it, it's, it's controlled by the corporate office. Okay. Thank you. Good. Any other board members with questions? No. no. And um, I would ask, um, see, this is Sarah Northrup again, um, about the uh, the brightness. Has uh, have there been any comments from DPW? Is there any? Uh, has this been evaluated for meeting the lighting standards, the brightness? I'm aware that since the other 
previous signs have been removed and it's, I think it's been closed for a while. Uh, we're adding lighting and I'm always cognizant of just, you know, we have so much excess ambient light at night and residential area uh, just to the west of the property that um, I'd like to know that these LEDs aren't too bright. I'll speak no, to that. The no lighting plan gets reviewed at the time they pull a building permit or the sign permit, and they can't do that till after the appeal period for this. So all of those get reviewed at that time. Okay. Re I, reviewed I, for compliance with our with our ordinance, right? For right. Yes. So, for lumens. Yeah. Yeah. If you give us if you give us the lumen requirements, um, Valerie can have that set either through the thickness of the acrylic letters or on, on, on a dimmer. So, And we do, these signs come standard for Dollar Tree that we build with a diffuser yeah. on the front. Right. So the we do limit the light that's coming out of the signs just standardly. Okay. Any other questions from board members? Yeah. If, if not, I'll ask if uh, Carolyn, do we, uh, do we see anyone, uh, members of the public who wanted to comment or ask questions about this application? Uh, no, I don't see any um, hands raised. Okay. So I guess a uh, question for the board, do we first have a motion to close the public hearing after which we would normally deliberate and vote on a motion to uh, on the on the application uh, but once we close the public hearing uh, we're not able to have any more comment or input from the applicant or the public but if the board feels like we have all the information we need to make a decision we could entertain a motion to close the public hearing i can um, move to close the public hearing i'm comfortable with moving Moving okay. this forward. Yep. Second. And we have a second. And because we're virtual, we need a roll call vote, please, Carolyn. Um, Sarah Northrup? Yes. Uh, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes. So the public hearing is closed. That's unanimous. Now we can have discussion or a motion on the uh, application for the special permit. By the way, I'm completely comfortable with this, especially if we had a condition that uh, the lights will be uh, turned off one hour after the business closes. I'll take a stab at um, framing a notion. Motion, excuse me. Um, all right, so as far as conditions, we uh, talked about the timing of the lighting being turned off and um, otherwise meeting all the codes. I'm just uh, checking over our recommendations. Thank you, Carolyn. All right. I move that we approve the special permit for um, signage at uh, 180 North King Street. 172, 172, I think. 172, okay. That's what my agenda says. Oh, yes, yes. Hmm. Um, I'm looking at the, uh, at our, uh, information sheet with the photo and the compliance. But there was a mix up on the map ID and address in the application. Uh, and so I was trying to correct it in the staff memo. Okay, thank you. Is it 180? Is it 180? I guess we better get that ready. Yeah. Um, Dollar Tree um, as presented under the condition that the light illumination of the of all signs is uh, turned off an hour after store closing. 
Uh, does that cover us? And do we have the correct address? If so, I'll second that motion. Sorry for the vagueness there. Are we 180 or are we 172? I see that it's 172 on the assessor's data, but we'll have we have the map ID, which is the legal uh, more of a legal description than addressing. So I think okay. you're covered. Okay. okay. So let's make sure we include the um, the map ID in the motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 18 15. Yeah. Okay. Thank then a um, mm -hmm. second. And just in terms of discussion, um, do, oh, we closed the public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, it occurs to me we didn't address when the lights are going to be turned on uh, be, before the business opens. Um, um, I wouldn't turn them on before the business opens. I don't want them coming on at six in the morning. That's the point, yeah. Um, I mean, the, you know, signs aren't used for direction, for, for aiding walkers or drivers. Um, so they, you know, I don't know that you, you know, you could say that it could come on at, um, you know, at business opening, but there are required lights over the entrances, cars driving in have headlights, they can see their shopping lot, uh, parcel lights. So there's no reason for the sign lights to be on before the close of business. I mean, before the open of business, I would say. Um, so you could certainly add that as part of the a clarification of the condition to say that they um, don't turn on before business opening and they close an hour after, uh, or they turn off after uh, an hour after close. Yes. Okay. Um, so we have a second. So I guess I guess we just could take a roll call vote on the. Uh, well, is that are we making that formally an amendment to the motion? I think we are. Yes, I think that, we are. Uh, yeah. Turn yep. off an hour after closing and turn on, uh, and won't be turned on until opening. Yes. Yeah. Um, and okay, uh, so that's. Oh, you want me to do the roll call or? Yeah, with as long as we're clear about that, those two conditions. Okay. okay. Otherwise, as presented. Okay. Uh, yeah, please roll call, please. Sarah Northup? Yes. Uh, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes, that's unanimous. Okay, great. Um, so uh, I think we can move on to the second item on the agenda. And yep. congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the other, the second and last item on the agenda is the request for a special permit art effects for a larger blade sign and more than one front wall sign at 14 Green Street, Northampton, map ID 31D-52. This is the application for new signage for the corner of Green Street and West Street, I guess, the Smith College bookstore is gonna be going in there. So do we have a, App, the representative of the applicant here or the applicant. Hmm. Uh, there's someone muted trying to speak. Hi, uh, my name is Lauren Rosen and I own Artifacts. Uh, I'm representing Smith College and their new bookstore, which is moving from the student center to 14 Green Street. And uh, we, we have had a couple of iterations with this project. Um, and I think you have the most recent, I, I hope. Um, <clears throat> on the corner, uh, it has three facets. And it's a collective uh, 90 feet plus or minus of uh, frontage. Um, you know, I guess you allow one sign. With this particular frontage, as you can see, the sign band is fairly narrow and it's segmented uh, and broken apart by pilasters. Um, it's also an unusual frontage in the sense that it's tri-sided. So, um, you know, as you look at it, facet A on the left-hand side really says Smith College Bookstore although it may appear as two signs. Um, 
the letters are centered within bays that are within uh, the pilasters. Um, and unfortunately, I'm looking at an older version right now. If you can, um, can you? So just to clarify, we never got a digital version of the updated plans. We got a paper version, but I'll describe the changes to the board so that they're aware, which was done in text. So this um, Smith College is moved around to the corner and instead of having a projecting blade sign here, they put this emblem up here on the corner face. Um, so this is no longer part of the special permit application request because this is a projection beyond the by right projection um, from the wall and it becomes a, a front wall sign. And because it's a corner building, you're, they're allowed to have two, but the, the logo sign becomes the third sign. So the board is, um, the special permit request would be for a third front wall sign effectively. Carolyn, would, would you be able to uh, share screen with me? Um, I did think I think you're all set for shared screen. Um, let me just double check here. Oh, no, but it went away. Okay. Tommy's a fast cat. Are you catching that? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So there you go. Um, so if I can describe the fabrication, uh, there are non illuminated letters for Smith College bookstore. And I have one right here um, that's primed. This is uh, the M, which you're probably seeing backwards. Uh, it's a prismatic style letter which means uh, it's pyramidal in its profile. And it's stud mounted to the building with a standoff of a half inch. Above it, uh, we make custom strip fixtures. And these particular fixtures fit exactly into the opening between the pilasters. They're powered by 3,500 Kelvin uh, LEDs. So it's a, a pretty warm light. Uh, Smith College Bookstore on both sides, same method, same lighting technique, um, pretty subtle. Really, it just highlights the letters as a spotlight would highlight uh, an actor on stage. It, it's pretty uh, tailored to the message. And um, the sign in the center is a stencil cut illuminated sign. Um, it's stencil cut through uh, eighth inch aluminum plate. The letters light, uh, they have acrylic that's inserted and dimensional, proud of the face by three eighths of an inch uh the building in the center which is part of the smith college logo is also stencil cut and that's projected through the center uh it's also three-eighths of an inch proud of the face inside are 3500 leds 3500 kelvin that match uh the custom strip lights so the lighting's consistent throughout so collectively, um, you know, just square footage wise, on 90, uh, I'm sorry, we have 95 linear feet of frontage and we have a cumulative uh, square footage on the signs of 40.1 square feet. Is that measuring the letters themselves or the box you know, and it, the letters. It is. It's it's uh, drawing perimeters around the word groups. So Smith College being one, bookstore being another, and the circular piece being uh, the logo being another. Thank now, you. if we were to expand that and include the space, let's say between Smith College and bookstore, 
you would increase the square footage by approximately 10 square feet. And you know, that pretty much describes it. I'm happy to answer any technical questions or. Carolyn, could you clarify what warrants, what requires the special permit? I mean, I had spent some time looking at what we had previously, but how much, what does this change in terms of what, what they're asking us to okay? So it's still all special in a special permit purview. Um, essentially, it's, um, you know, two signs per facade, except for the center, or one larger rectangular sign. So if you, if you draw a box around Smith College Bookstore on both sides, that could be two signs. And then the third sign is in the middle on the third facade. So you're allowed two wall signs for corner buildings. Um, and so those Smith College bookstore signs would be allowed. It's really now just the emblem as the third sign that would be special permit. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. And there's um, only one entrance, right? Yes, the entrance is on that right facet. Yeah. Could you speak to the lighting? I'm, um, I, I saw the M that you held up as a, so that's a one inch prismatic letter that'll be mounted with a half inch spacer off of the brick surface. But it says lit from above with slim line. Yeah, Where so what, what'll happen lights? is um, this letter is going to be sprayed and off, off white. Um, low luster, what's called catalyzed acrylic polyurethane. Essentially, it's an epoxy paint that has uh, longevity. The lighting above, it's um, a very thin profile um, strip light. It kind of goes away. It's painted Smith green, which is kind of a black green that goes with the uh, metalwork on the building. And it's a semicircular, um, three inch in one direction, an inch and a half in the other direction. Can uh, you show us the fixture itself? Yeah. Let's so see. It, it, how far out from the surface of the building is it standing out? Oh, there we go. Yeah, there you go. So it's 16, okay. it's 16 inches out. So it's manufactured in such a way where we're able to keep a pretty tight uh, profile to the building. Um, 16 inches is about the maximum we we would go. Um, and the way the, the scoop is set and the lighting inside, the beam that comes out pretty much hits three to four inches above the letters and three to four inches below. So it's a controlled beam that's rectangular. And we, we manufacture the fixtures here. They're UL rated and uh, we have a few hundred out in the field. Um, I can send you uh, photos. We just did a beautiful sign for Connecticut College down in New London with the same lighting method. In fact, if you'd like to see it, oh, you know, there's one in town. We've done a lot of signs in Northampton. Um, uh, we did it for Ananda Kulsa, which is a jewelry store, which also has about a 3,000 or 3,500 Kelvin. Um, that would be a good example. Thank so the, the school seal, the college seal is backlit? That's backlit, but um, what you see in white is what lights. Right, okay. So I followed that correctly. And it, that particular, the, the round, the seal, would need to have the light on for the for it to function, for it to read. No, no, it could be non-illuminated as well. Um, we wouldn't want it to light 
much past 11 o'clock at night. Um, it, it, should, it, it, it shouldn't light at night and it really doesn't have to light during the day. Okay. Because the acrylic is what, what is referred to as milk white, which is kind of an off off white. It's uh, translucent. But it, it shows up, you know, it contrasts against that dark black green during the day. So it doesn't require lighting until nighttime. What I like about it and the, the reason I kind of suggested it, it breaks up the monotony of uh, the, the uh, overhead lighting. So it's pairing uh, direct back lighting with, um, you know, spotlighting. And the effect is, is kind of nice. It's kind of, if you can compare it to a ring, it's like the setting within the ring. Looks nice. Um, what is the height of that, the corner emblem? Uh, two, two foot three, so it's sorry. twenty-seven inches. I'm sorry, how how high is it off of the ground? Uh, height-wise off the ground, it's I could do some easy calculations. It's seven plus three plus three, ten, thirteen, about thirteen foot even. Ah, thank you. Great. I don't have uh, any other concerns. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions from board members, are there any members of the public waiting who want to comment? Mm -hmm. No, we don't see anybody. No, we've no. we've dropped everyone. <laughs> okay, there's so no one there. I, I'm not sure at what stage we should. I would like to um, talk through the hours it will be lit, turned on and off. Uh, want to make sure we have that opportunity to have that discussion. Yeah, I think the bookstore, they, they either close at 10 or 11. And I apologize uh, not knowing the exact time, but I'm, I'm sure it's a sign that's not so much for advertising as it is for just identity, um, destination, location type thing. So I'm sure they would be amenable to um, what whatever you felt was reasonable. I, I think you know ten or eleven is traditionally, you know, what would be fair in this type of uh, zoning. Okay. I mean, you could just say that it's on only during operating hours. Yeah, or then during you don't operating have to. hours. That that's probably a good idea, um, in the sense that. You know, people don't walk up to the door and see that it's locked. Well, that feels appropriate to me, particularly because there there is along that stretch in both directions quite a bit of uh, residential units. Yeah, and so I think that would be respectful and appropriate that the light that it's illuminated only during um, business hours. Exactly. Business hours. Yep. Okay. I agree. Good. Um... Are we ready to close the public hearing? Sure, I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Sec okay, and roll call, please. Um, Sarah Northa? Yes. Um, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes, so the public hearing's closed. So now uh, do we have a motion on the application for the special permit? you like to phrase that, Maureen? Uh, what do I need in front of me? Sure. The uh, uh, from the email or I, a nice statement of. I would um I would move that we approve the special permit um as well. The phrasing in um what we were given in the agenda is no longer current but it because there, there's no blade sign so for as presented uh two sidewall signs smith college bookstore and one central on the third the corner facade the um co college seal backlit illuminated as presented uh and the lighting as presented with no and this is map id 31d52 at 14 green street uh with the uh, stipulation condition that the lighting is only on during operating hours. 
And second, please. Second. Any more discussion? Um, I like it. Okay. So I guess just a roll call, please. Sarah Nortek? Yes. Maureen Scanlon? Yes. And David Booker. Yes, that's unanimous. That's approved. Thank you. It's always sure. a pleasure to deal with Northampton. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the uh, I, I don't know if I don't think we have any minutes. So uh, do, do we do we have to talk at all about schedules scheduling going forward or before we yes, you do have a you do have a meeting December eighth just as FYI but I'll send that out. Is that the one that was continued or is there something Thank else? You. Uh, there is an additional item as well, but there was, is the continuation and then actually there are two items. I think one is a sign and the other one is an appeal. Sarah, um, Carolyn, I would like to um, access the video of the meetings uh, prior uh, regarding that continuation. And I, uh, I don't know how to access that. I tried. I couldn't find it. Oh, I sure. can just email so you. Yeah. yeah, they're all at Northampton Open Media. So if you go to Northampton Media, openmedia.gov, they have a government video um, okay. link and they're all in there. Okay. And I just need to look up the date of when that last meeting was. Yeah, I mean, it'll be, be there by date. By date. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but Maureen, you must be talking about the meeting where there was a substantive discussion where we issued our last decision on that. Yes, but I was part of the that. original meeting, but right. then I was not part of the other meeting. And because we have not been able to approve minutes from it, I don't know what transpired at that meeting. So oh, there was the continued, the one continuation was continued without opening. Yeah, there was no. So there's nothing to review. You know, the only subject of meeting goes back okay, to when so it was not there wasn't a presentation about no. continuing it okay. no we never opened okay yeah. it was simply yeah. granting the continuance which has happened a couple of times just so you're not looking for Thank things you. okay unnecessarily yeah. yep yeah. um there was the decision we rendered way back maybe last year i can't remember. right that's the one i was present for yeah. right that yeah that was the only substantive one and carolyn just so i'm clear <clears throat> on the eighth we have the, you mentioned an appeal. Is the appeal you're talking about? Is that the continuance? The continuance? No, no it's a it's another appeal. So it's two it's a new one. Yeah. And and the uh, and what was the third thing on the eighth? I think it's a sign. Okay. And um, I guess you're not able to give us any updates on what's happening with the one that was continued. I know we cannot talk substance, no. but yeah. okay. okay. So. Um, Okay, so I guess and just and but I I I, sh I, I should I plan to be available the eighth. Just uh, Sarah and Maureen, do you do you know if you'll be available on the eighth? I thought it was the seventh, but whatever it is, I know I'm available. I made it made myself available. Yeah, I think it's, it's the eighth. eighth. Yeah, Thursday the eighth. Okay. Thursday the eighth. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Right. Okay, so Thanks. now I think we get. I guess we could move to adjourn now. So moved. Second. Okay, and a roll right. call. Sarah Northrop? Yes. Uh, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes. That's unanimous. Right. Thank you, everybody. Right.